Okay, we're standing here with Jason Rogers uh, here at the Museum of American Fencing and uh, I have Jason holding the uh, under 20 National Sabre title which he won back in 1999. So Jason, what memories do you have of winning that under 20 Sabre title in 99? Uh, it actually it was a really special title for me because I, I beat Ivan Lee to make the top two and I ended up fencing Mike Momsalitsa, who was a very, very good friend of mine for the gold medal. Wasn't he from L.A. also? No, Mike Momsalitsa Oh, he was Kansas. Kansas. And then he moved That's to Ohio. That's right. We, we trained together. We went to Ohio State together. But, I mean, these were just really good friends of mine. I mean, obviously, like, people that I admired, they were my competitors for many years. But I had won titles before, but I don't think I... I didn't have the sense of holding a title until I won the Junior Olympics. Uh, at the Summer Nationals, and so to be here, to be reunited with this trophy is a bit down, of a trip down memory lane, so I'm happy to be here to pull it. Well, excellent. Well, thank you. Yeah, so tell me something. What, is there any basic difference between your two coaches, your two main coaches, mm -hmm. of going from Daniel Costin to Vladimir Nazlimov, in terms of the way you would attack people? Is it was a different lunging? Was there different beats? Definitely. Definitely. What was the biggest differences between the two coaches' styles? I think working with Daniel, being from the Romanian school, he was very, very emphatic about using precision. So we did a lot of cuts underneath, cuts just to the top of the wrist, faint cuts on the inside of the wrist to the outside of the wrist. Versus Vladimir, who came from the, you know, he's obviously from the Russian school, he would teach me how to cut almost sideways and to do so with enough force that I could kind of push my way through a parry. So Daniel had more of a, so nice. a sneakiness to, his, to, to the way that he taught me, or he, he emphasized that I, that I attack with a bit more of a sneakiness, whereas Vladimir taught me how to kind of do power, to use good technique and use a little bit more power to be able to get through an attack successfully. You know, I know that uh, Daniel loves to, Daniel Costin emphasizes that all beats and movements have the thumb behind them. Right. Did uh, Vladimir have a different view of the beats? Not necessarily. I think. Did uh, he allow back beating? Did he uh, do some back beating though? We didn't do as many creative types of beats. I think Daniel taught me, you know, a, a, the, two, the circle two beat that I use a lot. Um, Daniel also taught me the back beat, like you're talking about. Vladimir was very um, focused on keeping everything forward. So whenever I would take the blade, I would always take it very, very forward. I would never go too far one way, or because then you couldn't get back the other way to take a parry if you'd miss the blade. So everything was forward, forward, forward. Um, that's really the only difference that I see between the two. Did they both utilize stop cuts similarly? I think that Daniel was a greater proponent of the stop cut. So again, the sneakiness, the under the wrist. I mean, I attacked under the wrist, but I also did my stop cuts under the wrist. And Vladimir taught me stop cuts, but he taught me to use distance as a judgment as opposed to using kind of an, using a certain type of stop cut as a strategy. I remember Daniel when he used to fence you. When you'd come forward, he'd break your tempo with a, a flesh to the head, mm -hmm. or now a flunge to the head. Do you remember those actions he would do? He would attack me, or I He would attack, attack you in the middle of your movements forward. And he would just strike the head with a flesh in the middle, trying to break your tempo. Right, exactly. And uh, is, uh, how did that help you to adjust to your changes that you needed to to keep your right of way going? I think, well, the, the idea that, that he was trying to get through was that you can't go back at a consistent speed. Because any type, anytime you're creating a rhythm that is consistent, your opponent catches on to that right away, whether you're attacking or you're defending. So he would teach me that I needed to go back you know, in different stages, sometimes fast, open the distance a little bit, then let the distance close, open the distance, let the distance close. And so if I was ever too close, he would snag me with that flesh to the head. Great. So it was learning how to create that open-close effect while not getting too close and getting into the danger zone. Well, Jason Rogers, thank you very much. My pleasure. And good luck in your flight back to New York City. Oh, thank you.